Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Last week I made a video showing you how you can smooth your 3D prints with resin. Well, this week I have another 3D printing hack for you. It also includes resin, but it also includes baby powder, and it's gonna allow us to fill the gaps in our 3D prints. And no, not like that. That's just absolutely crazy. <laughs> All right, so for this project, obviously you're gonna need some 3D prints. This one I'm gonna be using, again, Nico Industries Iron Man faceplate mask. It's the same one I used in the last project. However, it's not the exact same file. Funny enough, this was the first file that I printed and I ended up having some issues with the print where I ended up having to change the filament halfway through and I got a line through the print and also the nozzle dug in to the actual print. So I have a gap here that I wanna fill. There's a whole seam that I wanna fill as well as a big divot in the actual print of the faceplate. I haven't done any of the resin smoothing for the faceplate that we're gonna be working with today. All I've done is added in a little bit of primer on this just so that we could see the layer lines a little bit easier for this, uh, as well as the gaps that I'm looking to fill with today's project. In theory, this could also be used not just on your FDM 3D prints to fill gaps, but also any of your resin 3D prints. So here is a Fuse shoulder armor that I modeled and printed a few weeks ago, and on the inside of it, I didn't like how there's a big divot here where uh, some of those supports or didn't quite print properly, maybe because it wasn't supported all the way properly. So I'm gonna fill this up as well. We're gonna test out how that works against not only a PLA print, but also a resin 3D print. I also have this multi-pieced base that I've partially assembled here that has a really big seam running down it. And I'm hoping this method will help hide that seam for us before I run off and try and paint this. We might be asking yourself, well, Jesse, why are we even bothering with this test when we already have Bondo spot putty? And yes, this works great and it's relatively affordable and I guess it's easy to get a hold of assuming you can get to a Walmart or order it online, but maybe you can't access or you don't wanna run out and buy it or maybe you don't like how this stinks up your workspace <laughs> when using it. Uh, I always get complaints in the house when I'm working with this so I try to use it sparingly, but it does work well. But I'm seeing, just trying to see if this is gonna be a good alternative to Bondo Spot Putty. Also, I'm wondering how well the consistency is gonna be. Can I make it thicker? Can I make it thinner? Depending on how much resin and baby powder I'm mixing in. So while working with this, we are gonna need a few additional tools. I have some gloves because I don't wanna be getting any of the resin on my hands or skin. I also have these plastic mixing cups that I was using previously. I have a chip brush. I'm not sure how thick or thin I'm gonna be making this, so maybe I wanna end up brushing it on. Uh, I'm gonna be planning on just using it with my fingers for the most part with the gloves on. You'll also want something that you can mix with, so I don't have any stir sticks laying around, so I'm just gonna use a foam sponge uh, chip brush here that I have laying around in the workshop. We're also gonna need some baby powder or talcum powder to work with, with mixing in with the resin. This little bottle was about a dollar at my local grocery store. And we're also gonna need some resin. And today I'm gonna be using Elgoo's ABS like gray resin. And today's video is sponsored by the folks over at Elgoo. Elgoo is the maker of some fantastic resin 3D printers, including the Elgoo Saturn, which is a mid-size 4K monoscreen resin 3D printer, and the Elgoo Mars 2 Pro. They are also the makers of the Neptune 2, which is what I used for printing of the Iron Man faceplate that we're gonna be using in today's video. And yes, I know the Neptune 2 and the Saturn are extremely hard to get a hold of right now, but I have been confirmed and told that those are on the way, so there should be more supplies back available here on Amazon in the upcoming days or in the next week or so, so fingers crossed on that one. Again, a huge thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take one of these little cups and I'm gonna pour in a little bit of resin here. I don't think we need a whole heck of a lot, but I'm gonna pour in just a little bit to get us going. And then it's just, just gonna be in a, a big experiment of testing this out. And I should say a huge thank you to Josh Jones over on Facebook for initially pointing this out to me as even something that can be mixed together here. So I just put in, I'm not even sure what the ratio was. Maybe that was, uh, oh yeah, that's already thickened that up quite a bit. Uh, so here I'm gonna add in just a little bit more. Let me rearrange my camera here. All right, so I have my, my resin and I'm just adding, you know, maybe that's a one to one ratio is what I may be going for at this point. Ooh, yeah, that's getting nice and thick. It's almost looking like icing that you would put on a cake. It's still a little too liquidy for me. I'm really looking for a more of a paste than 
a liquid. So I'm gonna keep adding some powder in here. I might add just a little bit more to this mixture here. All right, so this is the consistency that I was shooting for with this. You see it's not running at all. It almost looks like cake batter or icing. It's really thick and it's not gonna be as uh, workable, I think, as maybe, or maybe it would be if I even added more to this to equal the similar to what we might get with some of this spot putty. So here, let me squeeze some of this out. You'll see here it's, it's the spot putty is really thick and it's cold. So it's, it's much, much thicker than what we're working with here, but it's very, very close. So I'm gonna try and go with this for now and let's see what the results are by just adding on a little bit here to the Iron Man face mask and placing some inside that hole. Basically, I'm just trying to fill the void with resin and then we're gonna use the UV light to actually cure that. So here I should be able to just use my finger with this as well. And yeah, I can run it across that seam that I had on the print. Man, this is, this is almost just like working with Bondo Spot Putty. See how thick that is? There's no way I'd normally do, be able to do that with just resin. So here, I'm gonna just smooth this on with my finger. In fact, I could probably go over the entire faceplate. I mean, you could, in theory, <laughs> the last video I just did about smoothing your prints with painting on resin, you could rub it into the, all over your prints this way as well. All right, so here is the updated Iron Man faceplate. I haven't cured this yet. We're gonna do that here in just a second, but I've just used my fingers to smooth on this resin talcum powder mix on the lower half of the faceplate. I'm purposely leaving the top half not finished here because there is a few layer skips at the top that I would like to have sanded smooth or just filled in and I think it'll be a nice contrast. I did also go over with my finger over the entire bottom half. And again, I didn't use any of the resin smoothing like I showed in the previous video. This, in theory, might even be a better option than painting on for something as really flat and smooth like this here. All right, so I've got my UV light and my protective glasses on. Thank you for all the comments about that previously. Yes, you wanna make sure that you're using some of these protective glasses anytime you're working with UV light. So I'm just gonna flash this on here and it really should uh, cure and firm up really quickly here. We'll test that out in just a minute or so. I'm gonna let this cure for about a minute or two and we'll test it out and see how uh, how it is afterwards. All right, that was about a minute and it's completely dry to the touch here. It's not, it doesn't seem like it's tacky at all or anything like that. Uh, and I should, let me go grab some sandpaper and I should be able to start sanding this smooth. Let's go over that area. Ooh. <laughs> that filled in the void perfectly. Oh, this is gonna be great. All right, this worked really well. I might have a small pinhole size filling that I need to go back in there and I could just use a little bit more of this resin baby powder mix, but it's completely smoothed out for the most part, the front of this faceplate. Again, I left the top part not filled at all. So I want this to still be rough and see all the layer lines. What I'm gonna do is just throw down a little bit more of paint on this so that we can actually see what the results are uh, with some paint thrown down on it. All right, so let's talk about the results that I'm seeing from this little experiment. First of all, the Iron Man faceplate I did successfully fill that divot, but I have a whole lot of other smaller pockets that I'm getting from using this mixture. I could probably circumvent that just by simply sanding this down more or by simply just adding in a little bit more of the filler into the little recesses to any of the excess areas where this wasn't completely smooth. Uh, there is a little bit of a pocket left still. Again, I could just fill that back up and sand it smooth. The one call out that I wanna make sure that you are aware of for this, just like when you're working with the Bondo spot putty is the mixture completely covered up the details of those bolts and you really can't see them at all at this point. Next up was this resin 3D printed shoulder armor piece that had a big divot on the inside from where the supports were. And I was able to really easily fill that with this concoction. 
Again, it would just be a matter of sanding this smooth. The other really cool perk about using this over something like Bondo Spot Putty is that with the UV light, it cures almost instantly. I mean, it was just amazing how fast this cures when working with it. I then had this resin printed miniature base that came in multiple pieces and I was filling the seam. Obviously I did an absolutely horrendous job sanding this smooth to try and cover up where the seam was. It did in fact fill those gaps. And what I'm really impressed by is that where all of the rock details were coming together, you really can't see where any of the actual join or seam lines were for this. So if you have projects that are, maybe you have a figure that you've 3D printed and you are trying to hide the seam where you connected the arm to the body, or you have a base, something like this, or you have a weapon that you're combining multiple pieces together and you wanna just help fill those seams, this seems to work really, really well for that. One last test that I just really didn't mention at the beginning of this that I wanted to try out was I added even more powder to my resin mixture so that it was super, super thick. And I tried to see if I was able to fill in some of the actual holes from a larger resin 3D print on the bottom of one of the bases of these stands here. This is a Sonic the Hedgehog statue. And in fact, it did fill. And I purposely left these other two empty just so that you could see how large those were that's probably about an inch wide, give or take, and I was able to more or less fill that void and then cure it, and it's now completely solid here. All in all, I would say this project was a pretty big success. This is just another tool and another option out there for anybody that's looking to try an alternative to using Bondo for helping fill any of the gaps or divots that you might have in your 3D prints, whether it's an FDM printer or a resin print, this seems to work really well. And I'm most impressed with its ability to fill the seams here and gaps when it comes to things like these bases or maybe a miniature figure that you're trying to work with. I'll for sure be using this more and it's something that you can easily experiment with with just a little bit of resin in a container and just continually add baby powder to it. It seems like it's maybe a four to one ratio is my best guess of what I've got some of the best results with here today. And again, I was able to just easily spread that with my fingertips as well. Thank you everyone that tuned in to see the last video. I honestly can't believe that that picked up over 100,000 views in under a week. A little crazy for me here. Also, a big thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. I should also mention that Nico over at Nico Industries that has the file that I'm using here for this Iron Man faceplate that is part of a larger project. This is on sale, or you can use the code UJBABY, that's right, it should be a fun one, to save 15% off the file order. And obviously I wanna say a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. If you are interested in finding out how you can further help support the channel and projects that I'm working on, you can find links down below to my Patreon. And let me know in the comments what you thought about this resin baby powder mixing idea. It's really fantastic to me. And I just like the idea of it being able to cure almost immediately with UV light and you being able to just jump right in and starting your sanding and smoothing. And if you have any other interest in seeing me doing any other weird combinations like this and seeing how it works, let me down in the comments. Would love to check it out. Thanks again to Josh Jones for messaging me over on Facebook and letting me know about this cool little trick. Hey, thanks again for watching you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye now.